This morning on today's health, taking control. Hair loss is one of the emotional challenges that often comes with breast cancer treatment. And we recently met a woman who decided to beat her treatment to the punch by getting her head shaved. Here's her own story in her own words. My name is Meredith Israel. I was 35 when I was diagnosed with stage four metastatic breast cancer. When you are told you're gonna go into chemotherapy, the first thing you think about is losing your hair. I decided I was gonna shave my hair off on my own terms. I wanted to be in control because the cancer had won everything else so far. I decided to have a head shaving party with some survivors in my family. <laughs> no, I will cut the ringlet off. We just put out food, we talked. I'm so sorry. I don't know, the room just felt so surrounded with love. I had a good cry in the shower this morning. I didn't want to wash out the shampoo. I just remember seeing the hair in ponytails. I want to keep some of it. And that was my hair. It was a really tough day. <laughs> I love my hair. Hair makes you feel pretty. You have a great head shake. Do I? Yeah. yeah. Like washing it in the shower. Within two weeks, it'll be all gone. Walking into a room where there was a mirror was just scary. It's horrible. It's horrible. My biggest thing about losing my hair was my daughter. I just didn't want to scare her. I needed to still be her mommy. It's okay. Your partner still will look at you as you're beautiful. I have no regrets that I did it this way. This is me. And Meredith Israel is joining us now along with NBC's chief medical editor, Dr. Nancy Snyderman. Good morning to you Hi. both. <laughs> just watching that just obviously makes you relive all of this. Before we get to that, how are you doing now? I'm okay. I'm on a, I'm have a new tumor in my liver and I'm on chemo two weeks on, one week off. And I, but I live my day like it's normal. I get tired, but otherwise I'm alive and I keep going. This head shaving party. You say you have no regrets about it, but watching you go through it, it clearly represented more than just, which is big enough, to lose your hair. It seemed to have represented something deeper. What is that? I wanted to do it. I have a three-year-old, and I didn't want to scare her emotionally. I did not want to have my hair shedding. And I think for women, people don't realize how hard it is to lose their hair. So... I just wanted to tell women we could do this, and it's hair, and it's a hard day, but I wanted to do it my way. I did not want to wake up, and at this point, since my hair is currently shedding now, I every morning wake up to the words mommy, and then I immediately feel my head to mm -hmm. say, when am I going to have to shave it again? So it's just to tell women of all ages that you can do it, and it grows back, and as much as it makes you self-confident it doesn't identify who you are so it sounds like it gives you a lot of strength to have taken control but it shows your own courage I it's did. almost like it, you've become this warrior standing up i did and cancer. i have warrior on my tattoo because i did i stood up to it i wasn't See? i wasn't waiting a day to do it i did it the day i knew i was going on chemo you, i shaved oh, my it's head what's really interesting to me watching you watch that piece was this sort of ownership of it and you surrounded yourself with these strong women who loved Survivors. you and nurtured you and you decided that you were going to define it and that's mm -hmm. an extraordinary moment of strength one of the uh, things that I notice with m people I know who have gone through cancer, specifically breast cancer, is there's so much attention paid to the doctors. and all, th There's so many kinds of doctors you have to deal with, mm -hmm. but not as much maybe attention paid to the emotional, um, the, the doctors you need to talk to or the people you need to have around you for your own emotional support. Is this, is this um, the, the Well, the we know, you know, we now know there's some science behind this. I mean, decades of science looking at quality of life issues in women who have had breast cancer and go on and get treated. Maybe not length of life issues, but quality of life. And you talk to a woman who's going through it and has children and says, I plan to be this survivor. That quality of life is extraordinarily important. Some women are going to say, I want it to be gradual. Other women like Meredith are going to say, I want to shave my head. Other women I know have gone, have gone out and bought the most expensive silk scars they've ever owned, and they've wrapped their head in it. 
But at some point... I bought a wig I've never worn. Yeah. <laughs> I've never worn my wig. I, I bought a wig for my sister when she got breast cancer. She did wear it, so some um, people do decide some, to wear it. And that's the individualization of it all. I'm not meant to be in the wig. And yeah. But I respect the women who do it. I respect the women that aren't comfortable enough to shave their head. But I think... Each hospital handles it differently, and but I think I did it my way by having my girls around me and my family and doing it. And and you um, you found your cancer, I know, through yeah. self-examination, yes, and your your fight has really been, uh, in many ways, out of love for this three-year-old daughter. It is. I want Naomi to know what I did. I want women to do self-exams. It's free. We're not diagnosing our own cancer, but you're going to the doctor and you're saying, I found a lump. Can you check it? So there's nothing wrong with doing it. Well, wow. you're brave. Thank you. And beautiful. Thank you. And, and you, you get to own strong. your own body. I own my hair. I own your hair. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up after this.